What's up? It's Marcus with Retro Game Players. Today I'm just going to show you how to do a quick repair on a Sega Genesis. This is a uh, Model 2 Sega Genesis and I've noticed this problem on these. This is like the third one that I've seen that does this. Basically the power cord on the back or the, the spot where you plug it in, that socket there for the power tends to get loose on these and it seems to happen more on the Model 2s than the Model 1s or threes so it could be wrong that's just my personal experience but this is a pretty simple repair um, you just have to resolder the points on that jack there's three of them so I just thought I'd show you how to do this real quick it shouldn't take too long so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip this over um, and take out these four screws one on each side and then uh, there's a few more sh screws I'll show you on the IO shield but I'll try and show you how this works here or doesn't work actually uh, basically it's just completely loose so when I plug it in you can kind of see it wiggles like that and it's 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 the actual jack I mean the the jack itself actually moves I know it's kind of hard to tell but yeah it's completely loose so look how look how much that plays around so we're going to take that out and fix it. Also, I can show you that it turns on. Um, so right now, the light's on, as you can see, and I'll just move it, and if you watch, the light goes out, see? So you can see how that's that's happening there. So that can be kind of a pain. A lot of times, people actually just like rubber band it around the front or do something like that, you know, uh, in a certain direction there, and that'll work. But let's go ahead and fix this. Okay, first thing, go ahead and unscrew all the screws. Also, like to point out that if you need help, you can call Sega of America right there, and you know they'll go ahead and help you over the phone too. Okay, let's take the top off. This is our I.O. shield. There's a lot of screws on here. They're all on the outside edge. Okay, let's remove this. Okay, now there's just two screws here, one in there. The uh, jack here, you can see, again, is just real loose, so I can wiggle that. Two more screws where the cartridge goes in. These are the biggest screws on the board. And remove it very carefully comes up from the back first away from the controller ports and then comes out so the controller ports come out last so here's our here's our power plug you can see oh it's on there so we're just going to do these three points let's take it over to the solder station okay so if you look carefully you can actually see that they're just crumbling. It's just the solder's just crumbled away. So what I've got here is a uh, solder sucker and then my soldering iron. So I'm just gonna heat up each spot. Let it get all melted here. And then once it's melted, I'm gonna release the solder sucker like that. Do a little bit more. 
I like to try and get it as clean as I can. Go and do these other two. Now, because I've got two out of the three done, if I do any more, it actually could fall out. And then that's okay, I could clamp it. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna solder the side furthest away, then I'll desolder this other side over here. So before I do any of that, I'm gonna go ahead and take this little flux pen here, and I'm gonna just kinda draw some flux on it. And flux helps the solder flow. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put my iron right on the tip here and then the goal is to try and let the solder draw into it like that. I don't know if you can see that but I'm not touching the solder too to the actual touch the soldering iron tip. Alright, so that point looks really good. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this other side here. It is possible to just reheat the solder as well and kind of let it flow over the point and the pad. The pad is on the board. The point's coming through the bottom of the board or through the hole. But it's just better to remove the old solder in my opinion and just put new stuff on if you can. So that's what I'm doing. Okay, so now I can put my, put my flux on it. Go ahead and put it on this other point over here too. Okay. So now I can go ahead and flow new solder to it all. There we go. how you do that. Okay, I'm also wiping the soldering iron on a sponge right now too, just to kind of clean the tip a little bit. Okay, I got one more. There we go. All right, so that thing's been reattached. Let's go test it out. Okay, so before I put it all back together, I can just test it just by plugging it in like that it feels really solid you can also see the light is lit this is the power button right here so you can see that so this way I'm testing before I you know put it all back together but yeah it feels really good it's real solid so let's go and assemble it First, don't forget to put the uh, cartridge screws back in first, or the car cartridge slot screws. Those are the screws that hold the board to the plastic bottom piece. I.O. shield. I.O. shield technically is not required. Uh, it's actually some kind of an FCC device to help shield from interference. So. That's the whole point of it. So you can actually remove it, although 
I don't know if that affects like airplanes flying around or something, or radio stations, or TV signals, or what the deal is. Okay, now to put the top back on. Alright, it's assembled. So let's go ahead and try that new power jack out. Yeah, definitely feels good. Power light stays on. Real solid. So there you go. So go ahead and pop in your favorite game. Six pack is a good one because it's got Shinobi and Hang On. Golden Axe, Sonic the Hedgehog, Columns. So it was a great one. Streets of Rage. But uh, yeah, there we go. That's how you do it. That's how you repair the uh, power jack. So good luck, everybody. And until next time, keep it retro by playing your Sega Genesis Model 2 with the new AC adapter plug-in. Peace out.